This one come in because she locked up going down the road. You know what the hell we're gonna do here? They took this the intermediate drive shaft going to the front axle off. So imagine we got a problem. Look at there's Troy. Imagine we got a problem inside the front axle. The way it's rolling now, it appears that way. We'll go give it a listen. Troy! Let's see if we hear any crunchies. Feel it. I put my hand on the tire, and you can feel it chunking, clunk, clunk, clunk. I'm guessing we got a problem in that planetary or in the in the axle. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. More than likely, he's got some hamburger in there, and we're just gonna take it real slow. Get her in the shop. Get that all tore apart. See what we got. I teach you something. It's not very safe, but walk alongside and gently just rest your hand on there. Can you feel it on the other side too? Not really. This side was just clunk, clunk. That vibration will transfer its way out. Okay, I see him inside, eh? Good morning, folks. Morning. Hey, here we are this morning. Got a new project in the shop. I was gone all day yesterday, but yeah, most of the day. I just came in the other day and customer talked and customer and I talked on the telephone and basically he said they were running her down the road and she locked up, which isn't good. You know how I say that sounds expensive. We don't know yet, but uh, Troy was here by himself yesterday morning while Kyle and I were gone on the road and basically what we've got and we'll try to bring you along with all this stuff. Got the wheels off, got her up in the air and uh, only a quart of, a quart, a quart of gear lube came out of the front differential. So guess what's going to come down onto the floor? And we're gonna pull her apart and see what kind of see what kind of hamburger chunks we get in there or whatever something it rolls we were able to drive it in so um, that could be good or could be bad we don't know I could feel it on the wheel you'll maybe see that in the video above, in front of this I was putting my hand on the wheel and you can feel it clunk clunk right through it the transfers through the through the rubber tire, it's one way to feel and see if there's something wrong with the axle. You just put your hand on the tire and have the guy roll it really slow and you go, oh, it's in the axle. So this is a Dana Spicer. Hey, got the hoses released. I can hear the air. Good boy, Troy. So she's ready to basically come out of there. And I'll bring you along in the next, I gotta get a longer arm, in the next week or so, or next week. And we'll see what we find in there. Oh yeah, 
uh, uh, one more thing I'll add to that is uh, I ain't picking on any customers, okay? But to you guys out there in the world uh, that run these machines, I know it's a pain in the ass. It's a royal pain in the ass to tip the cab and pull the dipstick on them. And some of them didn't have, I want to say some of these didn't have the dipstick in them. Yeah, no. Anyways, it's a royal pain in the ass. But... That there, when when I got the text from my from Troy yesterday, and I was up north, and they said, "Hey, Mike, there was only a quart of oil in the diff." I guess that's why we have regular service intervals, and uh, I'm not preaching, but I kind of am service service intervals and hopefully us mechanic guys catch a leak and we can mitigate the expense oil is relatively cheap by comparison just saying uh, it's actually just good practice you know I know if people don't have time and they don't think they have time. It's I do the same stuff. I get in my truck and I drive, but you know it's a pickup truck. And it's, it's a little different. So, all right. I guess that's the old lesson: is just check your oil, or have us do it, Ponzi. You know, service. Okay, that's it. Enough of me squealing about that. Kyle, grab a hold of that yoke and let's see what it does. I want to show you guys this. Come on. What's supposed to happen? Oh boy. Aren't these things supposed to turn when that happens? Yeah. <laughs> what do we call that? Shot. No, the word is expensive. <laughs> That sounds expensive, remember? Mm -hmm. Alright, we're gonna pull that apart. That's bad. That's gotta be stripped off the whole way. What do you think is there? You think the ring is there? I think everything's gone. What I'm saying is you think part of the ring is gone? The there's a, a space in the in the ring gear? Or the pinion to be sheared out. All the teeth are gone. You think so? We're gonna take bets on that. All the teeth are gone. What's your bet? Two thirds are missing in the ring. Two thirds in the ring and pinion shot. Pinion shot. I say it's just junk. All right. Well, we better get on the horn and find out if they've got a whole differential. What size is that? Oh, you're getting as good as me. I'm better. You are not. <laughs> I got a kick out of this because there's two of you standing here and one's learning from the other and that's usually my job to teach you something. You don't teach us nothing. I don't? I just take over and do the work. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. That's one of my downfalls. How far? You got anything on the back yet? No. Nope. Skip around. Well, pack the shit out of it more than you got. Mm -hmm. But come over here and weld and then come way over here and weld and then go way over there and weld and then come back and weld and try to keep it from you might want to find a piece of tube too once you get it tacked on good did you run any tacks back here no tack some back here too because that's going to want to just get on a scooter and do some overheads and then you want to uh, weld it all the way across when i'm done or no yeah, on the front. On the front. Otherwise, it'll do what Aaron's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm shooting at nobody. Hi, Donna. I'm on film. You don't want to be? Okay. I wanted you guys to show me what's wrong with that thing over there. You got time for me? 
that ring and pinion. I gotta continue that video. I gotta show them what what we found. Oh yeah, go check it out. You gonna help me? Sure. Come on, Troy. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll do it myself. I don't care. What are them? I gotta look real. Holy crap! They're metal tootsie rolls. These look like <laughs> raccoon turds. Them used to be what? Tapered roller bearings. Mm -hmm. They're tapered all right. They're not round anymore. Holy wow. That was so bad that what that? Actually, them don't look that bad, but they're bad. Look how hot that got too. Mm -hmm. She's blue. So there's the differential. That's all. Them are the bad parts, right? Everything else is good? That's good. How is it all worn out? Oh, yeah. We got to go look at that. Yeah, I'll do all. Oh. I'm going to show them, them them pillow blocks that you sent along with me. The gals just laughed at me. Because them are, you got to force them in. Anyways, here's the front of that diff. Where the bearing goes, where that bearing was. That's all chewed up. This got to come from, what did we say? They had to order this from Finland. So this piece is coming. The rest of the bearing, or the rest of the differential is good. You checked everything, right? Mm -hmm. These bearings the inside here is all good. The yeah, spiders. Spider, spider. Yeah, let's show them that. Watch this. She grabbed a hold of it and says, oh, that's junk. Mm -hmm. This is a farmer bushing, I call it a farmer bearing. Well, they still use them everywhere today, but. Now, see if you can twist that one. Negative. Negative. And this one, you go like this. And it... So what'll happen is that'll spin inside the housing and just wear it out. And that's what was going on in both of them. She measured everything. Perfect. Yep. I gotta give them, I gotta give them two girls some kudos over there. They're pretty good at that stuff. That mm -hmm. Shano bearing. Go get your stuff in Shano at Shano Berry. They'll appreciate that. So I'm gonna go show them where that came out of. Okay. Whatever, Mike. Okay. I talk to myself a lot too. I come from down here, center section of Belmont. We had this in here a couple of months ago. I show you, because that's the way I am. We replaced that U joint up in there a couple months ago, but this is the carrier for there and in there. Can't see it, there it is. So, I just went and got the new bearings. This thing will be out of here shortly. We got one other issue if people at Valmets don't know it. 546 is if your brakes ever lock up. Pressure sending unit right there. Oil pressure. If this doesn't, the engine doesn't build oil pressure, it won't release the brakes. I forget how it all works. But anyways, he's got. He's been putting in a lot of oil, and the oil coming right out of the sending unit. And of course, Kamatsu doesn't have one in stock. Surprise! Surprise! Three days out, but it, he can put in a couple of parts of oil. We're gonna send it back to the woods, and he can change that himself out there. That's my guess. We got a hose leak, and but that was the weird part. You could hear some rumbling going on inside the center section. So he said, "Uh oh, stop! We finished the job, brought it in. About 10, 11, noon. We're already on our way. Got the parts. Should be out of here tomorrow morning." So. And look at Spivey, he's overhead welding. That's all I got. 
You can go back to what you were doing. You can watch and help and learn. Because the more you learn, the less I got to do. Right? Okay. If you get better than me, then hell's going to be froze over. <laughs> oh, what an arrogant, narcissistic son of a buck, right? Right. All right, I'm still talking to this thing. Here we go. That's it. That's it for today. Don't know else to tell you other than looking for more subscribers and all that stuff yet. So if you guys feel like sharing and share this stuff, and I'd appreciate it. We're doing good. Things are looking up. Pretty happy. So see you bye.